all right all right hello everyone and now welcome to a game um, as foggy spawns on the bottom left hand side of the map um, as the blue night elf going up against well dice who has spawned as the yellow night elf on the top right hand side of the map um jazzy asked the question can you um, is it strange that he only enjoys ga games that has his preferred race and it's well you gotta you gotta wonder why you're watching warcraft 3 if you're watching warcraft 3 um to learn something and and, and try to improve your own game then obviously pl watching your preferred race being played by professional players um you will get better um back when i was still actively playing i i realized watching games of sky and so and all, all of those players um, at the time just watching their games seeing how they played seeing how they moved and and their strategies and timing improved my gameplay and made it more enjoyable when i did sit down and play however um however being able to watch and if you're just here to watch a game and perhaps how, how can i say this if you're looking for a, a strong competitive game with a little bit of randomness and, and strategy at the same time then and you can and you can oh my gosh i can't speak clearly today and you can appreciate um just well-timed strategies those head fakes those jukes um then watching any good um good player should have a, a, a well should make you smile sometimes watching a night elf versus undead head fakes um, or any type of head fake where you look like you're setting up an expansion or don't or you hide things or you expand it purposely in your opponent's location so that they're not spotted out and you you make your opponent miscalculate and misjudge those are also things that you can apply to your own style of play without necessarily having to watch your own race um, so yeah keep keep in mind all of those things top right hand side of the map we are looking at hunter's hall dice opening things up with a priestess of the moon looks as though it is going to be mass huntresses trying to finish off that last forest troll trapper as the priestess of the moon picks up a circlet of nobility demon hunter picks up two circlets of nobility perhaps going to try and get some mana burns off or did he go for evasion first now trying to go after a couple of those wisp wisp could end up getting taken down no a detonation instead as the priestess of the moon could continue to try and rack up damage thank you for the follow as the demon hunter now trying to take down this second ancient of war before it becomes up and operational demon hunter while taking quite a bit of damage he's going to force um, a cancellation he does the wisp does end up walking away as the demon hunter down to 324 hit points he did use a mana burn earlier but i don't expect him to use another mana burn now as he wants to keep his moon wells all nicely topped off by um, making sure that he has maximum mana he in well he makes sure or he ensures that the um that the moon wells are only going to be replacing hit points and not mana at this point in the stage of the game um using um, while well, having the moon wells actually replenish his mana would actually be negative um negative efficiency as i believe all of those calculations there well just a general feel not going to get into the math details of the math right now circlet of nobility foggy going for triple circlet of nobility staff of teleportation and now ready to put on a pressure onto this hidden ancient of war off to the side all right ancient of war again it quickly get taken down remember the demon hunter does have a slightly faster attack speed because of that plus agility but also deals a little bit more damage per swipe as well swipe or no swipe but he's just swiping this thing down as the ancient of war it looks like is it it's gonna fall there in just a moment all right it looks also like the animation for the ancient of war to um, to build properly and um, was not completed it just kind of pops up out of nowhere mass archers at the front door here making sure that the huntresses and the priestess of the moon are unable to get inside demon hunter could try and staff of teleportation back home here and then try and put in a bit of pressure as this ancient of war is taking a far far more damage than i expected all right staff of teleport wait staff of teleportation coming on in by here getting in a little bit of damage no he had a staff of teleportation but it was on cooldown he was forced to use a scroll of town portal and able to get nearby and close enough as the archers are pushing the units back 
All right, scroll of town portal used in the first five minutes of the game. That staff of teleportation that head off to the north. Perhaps the, the cooldown must have still been going. And now foggy. Well, and that, we'll have to replace that scroll of town portal later. A very, very heavy investment. All right, Priestess of the Moon purposely bought the Dust of Appearance and now hiding next to that Goblin Merchant Shop as the Priestess of the Moon comes in with some Searing Arrow damage as well. All right, Demon Hunter will be forced to retreat back. Um, does have multiple Circuits of Nobility. Drinking from the Moonwells, even though he has Circuits of Nobility, should have perhaps dropped them and then picked them back up, but time is of the essence. A little bit of micro goes a long way staff of teleportation demon hunter heading back off to the north here and ready to continue to put pressure on dice's base however remember the the staff of teleportation does have a cooldown and if the demon hunter is too far away from all of the real action problems could arise foggy however counters this with a goblin tinker as a second hero training up from the tavern all right, Demon Hunter still sitting level one, even though we're at the six minute mark. Priestess of the Moon, Moon sitting at level two. And um, Finnish Oro has used up all of those searing arrow shots as the Goblin Tinker now uh, comes on by. Priestess of the Moon picking up a tome there and now in a massive retreat. Doesn't want to, well, turn all of his Huntresses into pincushions as there were a good number of archers nearby by Foggy. Demon Hunter still playing this really strange game, also leaving behind a wisp inside the main base of dice as Foggy looking to clear up some easy green creep camps now to get to level two. Foggy um, doing the same thing or is trying to start the same thing with his Goblin Tinker here. Clockwork Goblin's getting to get finished off as that Tinker gets or the Ogre Magi gets taken down. Wand of Illusion, Dark Ranger of Dice now comes on over and says thank you very much as he's able to pick up that item and that's worth at least 75 gold priestess of the moon sits at level two here we could be looking at a little bit of healing but a demon hunter is back in the base of dice ready to meet and greet this priestess of the moon and low hit point huntress um well army that is now making a trek back home all right, Ma Goblin Tinker Mass Archer Strategy now into Dryads. Demon Hunter still wandering around here, perhaps going to try and get in a couple of shots. No way to stop that, the channeling ability of that Staff of Teleportation as the Priestess of the Moon, well, needs to heal up a bit more. Now, Moonstones do not work well for you when your opponent is also a Night Elf player as Nightfall, well, f drops Moon moon juice into moon wells friend and foe alike ancient of war well absorbing quite a bit of damage dark ranger as um, dark ranger as that hero here are we going to be seeing perhaps a lot of orbs of venom or perhaps just a lot of those auto attack abilities to try and counter that demon hunter who will will most likely try and get in a lot of mana burns dark ranger seeing that level one there Potion of invulnerability being dropped there as we see a couple of ensnares go down. Pocket Factory now in as well. And then damage could be racking up. One Hunter is going to get taken down. Demon Hunter still sitting at level 1 after all this time trying to rack up a little bit more damage. Archers are there. Level 2 now on the Demon Hunter as the Searing Arrows and, and well, Glaives of the Huntresses try to find their target. One Archer about to get taken down. Black Arrow giving, a, well, that Lesser Dark Minion as the Priestess of the Moon gets up to level 3 for that level 2 True Shot Aura. Goblin Tinker continuing to fight their way back through. Dryads continue getting a little bit of slow poison. We could be looking at more black arrows as the Dark Ranger does get another final shot off there. And now finally a mana burn onto the Dark Ranger here. Overall supply count 29 supply going up against what 44. Foggy definitely ahead here. Constantly placing down all of that pressure as well an Ancient of War tries to retreat back. Dryads going after the ogre lord creep camp here uh right gonna get in a little bit of pressure a little bit of slow poison damage on that ogre lord shockwave ripping on through as the ogre lord tries to walk back slowly down to 290 hit points already and then getting in a mana burn as well gonna be a big nice item drop here and it could get into a level up for the goblin tinker and the demon hunter as the hood of cunning giving what intelligence and agility Ogre Magi going to fall here. Demon Hunter, well, with plus 11 damage, bonus hit points as well. And who's going get, to get that Tome of Intelligence? It is going to be the Goblin Tinker who needs it for all of his spells.
coming back through demon hunter just shy of level three and this has been a bit of a strange game um mass archers and mass range army coming in from foggy wisp gonna get taken down here clockwork goblins now as the demon hunter gets to level three is he gonna drop all of those moon wells or circuit of nobility and then drink up is the question nope just gonna straight up drink from those moon wells and make them bone dry nothing left for the goblin tinker back off to the north uh, where a scroll of the beast is the item dropped by that rock golem there not that useful as much of the army is dryads and will not be able to benefit from that damage buff tome of intelligence this time around going to be picked up by no one uh, apparently demon hunter doesn't care about tome of intelligence at all as we're looking at more clockwork uh, well clockwork factory action happening all right off to the side here the fountains um well fountains offering a, a position for healing meanwhile dryad skeletal minions those lesser dark minions acting as a front line being able to absorb a bit of damage as the demon hunter comes across with a big mana burn there to make sure that dice isn't able to reach critical mass on all of those lesser dark minions <coughs> coming back on through Demon Hunter sitting at level 3, has a potion of healing, has a staff of preservation, perhaps gave one of those circlet of nobilities to the goblin tinker who is back here. Yep, one back there. Staff of teleportation back inbound as the demon hunter found himself surrounded by skeletal minions and dryads. Getting ready into an engagement here. Gonna well, take down some of those units. Goblin Tinker trying to make its way back off to the right here. Perhaps getting a mana burn onto that Priestess of the Moon to try and rack up a little bit of damage. Dryad, slow poison, Staff of Preservation for the save. Still going in for the chase. And even these lesser dark minions do give at least some experience. But no, Foggy not even um, caring to get any of the experience from those lesser dark minions at all expansion attempt by dice already underway so dice if he can hold on to this fight here should be able to build an economic advantage as the dark ranger is still just outside of level three mass dryads now retreating back we are only seeing that tree of ages on on both sides but foggy is teching the tree of eternity demon hunter trying to venture forth perhaps push across here um, trying to push across here there is, this is all scouted out there is a wisp by foggy and we are sitting in no upkeep no no upkeep for foggy and low upkeep for dice dice in that low upkeep scenario gonna well head back off to the north here try and take down another wisp once more and well gets detonated for its efforts demon hunter wants to clear um well clear this fountain of health the problem is going to be there is really no frontline units except for the demon hunter who needs to regenerate quite a bit of hit points meanwhile uh, the army could be inbound here we may see a pocket factory be placed down or at least the gob the goblin tinker trying to scout out where that army in fact is demon hunter regenerating quite a bit of hit points and will be ready for action here in just a moment this dryad apparently not, not wanting to visit the spa for some odd strange reason mana burn straight up onto that dark ranger as the units are now in a massive retreat back staff for preservation saving that dryad once more we're looking at 66 supply running off of two bases going up against 40 or 50 supply going running off of one base but foggy is building up quite a bank here as we are going into mastery trained bears all right moon wells not uh, the capacity has not been upgraded only sitting at 300 there on both sides demon hunter could venture off to the north perhaps try and get in a little bit of pressure here dark ranger actually attempting to clear out the the fountain and um, creep camp which is often very difficult as is as it exposes your units uh, very much meanwhile a, a nice split play by foggy entry um, while well, feigning an attack with the demon hunter while the majority of the forces are really off to the side goblin sappers taking down um, some uh, moon wells and or a moonwell and nearly taking down the altar of elders goblin zeppelin taking a lot of damage here priestess of the moon trying to retreat back it does have a lot of survivability items but may not be able to reach there in time all right scrolls of healing priestess of the moon should be rejoining in on the battle that true shot aura actually well giving a, a significant damage bonus if it's just nearby and close enough foggy is taking quite a bit of a beating here as the units are just falling left and right beautiful staff of preservation use as well by dice 
uh, to save those low hit point units. But, well, they're looking to join back in on the battle, even though they are very, very low on hit points. All right, continuing to poke back across here. Clockwork, Goblin, or Archer going to get finished off, giving level 4 to the Priestess of the Moon. Druids of the Claw now joining in on the battlefield. We should be looking at a couple of rejuvenations um, uh, onto that Demon Hunter and also some of those Dryads. Supply count, 54 supply going up against 68. Dice with the major advantage here, and, and we'll see how long he'll be able to hold on to it as he is running up on two bases, and both players are in low upkeep. Demon Hunter sitting at level 3 should be getting a rejuvenation in order. There we are. There's that rejuvenation. And the Druids of the Claw acting more as healers right now uh, to keep the Demon Hunters nicely topped off. Goblin Tinker sitting at level 4. We're going to see some Dryad poking a little bit as well. Demon Hunter does have an Orb of Venom. Going to go straight after that Red Drake right there. Druids of the Claw getting in more rejuvenations across as that one Red Drake now retreats back. All right, Red Drake going to go ahead and rejoin in on the battle here. But the Druids of the Claw are already doing their thing. Foggy getting stronger as we are looking at now. Dice making a play down to the south and perhaps trying to put pressure on the actual main base here. All right. Well, or, we're looking at Scourge Bone Chimes as the item drop there. Druids of the Claw could will really benefit from that as the Demon Hunter trying to clean the things up once more. There goes one Moonwell. Demon Hunter looking to retreat back again. Thank you for the follow as we're going to finally go into an engagement. Dryads, um, Pocket Factory acting as a bit of a deterrent there. Druid of the Claw going to get focused down. No Staff of Preservation available for Foggy. Uh, uh, perhaps it was on cooldown as there is one on the Goblin Tinker and both sides still fighting their way through. Orb of Venom being applied to the Goblin Zeppelin just trying to take that down to remove that from the micro play of Dice as the Druids of the Claw are in that frontline position still. Foggy st uh, able to Staff of Preservation one of those bears. Druids of the Claw needs to join back in on the battle perhaps get a rejuvenation somewhere else that drew to the claw down to 37 hit points he gets taken down as well as the demon hunter tries to clean up more dryads thank you for the follow dryads demon hunter goblin tinker now making their way off to the north thank you for the bits every bit does definitely help so yeah thank you for the bits Oh, a lot of background noise today as the Dryads trying to head back um, home. Going to actually get caught in a transit. Thank you for the follow again as the Goblin Tinker ready to put in a pressure. Many of those Dryads are actually in the red. And well, those Clockwork Goblins, if you die next to one, you take a little bit of damage. And that in and of itself could take down a couple of key units. All right, there is a roar mainly for the heroes as we are now going into the Druids of the Claw. Dryads trying to poke apart the other units. Dice with a massive army of Dryads here. The army just seems larger for Dice continuing to put, uh, put pressure back and forth as we're looking at the Dark Ranger with Siphon Life as one of his abilities. All right, Siphon Life, a little bit of an odd ability here, something that you rarely, rarely ever see as the Dryads are now pushing back the other way, trying to take down more units. Priestess of the Moon now up to level 5. Level 3 True Shot Aura represents major damage bonus for those Dryads of Dice as they're slowly being able to pick apart bear after bear after bear. Foggy can hardly bear it as we're looking at the more Dryads continue to poke apart here. Dice's economic advantage has really translated into an army size and hero level advantage with that level 5 Priestess of the Moon pushing with level 3 True Shot Aura. All right, adding in or trying to rack up more damage. The Lesser Dark Minion could try and get in front of the Demon Hunter, and it does do exactly that, but no slow, um, no slow attack onto the Demon Hunter to make him suffer just a little bit more damage. <clears throat> What is Foggy's follow-up strategy here? He's down in supply 42 compared to 78. Quite a dramatic difference. Also behind in level and also behind economically. All three major, well, major, major measuring points um, belong to Dice at this point. As Dice, except for Tech, as Dice now going into tier three. All right, so out of the four, four points, well... Foggy has one of them in terms of tech, 
while dice has three tree of eternity perhaps we're just going to go into uh, tier three four two or uh, three three upgrades as the dryads are now retreating back all right a little bit of a split prong attack here and it looks as though foggy can be able to take down at least one dryad and continue with his eyes set on more the army is split up and that's not what you wanted to see from dice dice buying a couple of scrolls of healing making their way back off to the north here yeah upgrades as well um looking at the bears the bears are on zero one upgrades compared to two two dice seems to have everything and um, every possible imaginable advantage except for tech and with that unable to close out foggy as foggy is just simply retreating back foggy however cannot sit back and simply retreat to try and take this game he's going to be falling behind economically he has to make some sort of play here and he is upgrading to nature's blessing to move this tree of eternity to this four o'clock, five o'clock location. Mana burn onto the priestess of the moon and major mana loss right there. Units trying to retreat back again as the main army now ready to meet and greet that demon hunter who decides, you know what? I don't want to get that close right now. Ancient protectors being established, established up here as well. Uh, and still what is going to end up happening and perhaps establishing this center gold mine here dice upgrading the tree of ages thank you for the follow all right we are still training up more wisps um are we i we do already have nature's blessing by dice so dice can just well af after the tree of ages up or tree of eternity upgrade is done can just pick himself up and walk over to the middle portion of the map and then still hold a two to one um well mining advantage now the down the downside of moving your tree of eternity is that well that staff of preservation often just moves your unit a couple of pixels away and still and keeps them in harm's range this is a massive army of dryads here are we getting more upgrades we are getting the uh, well wellspring upgrade to increase the mana capacity of all of these moon wells at uh, first still no wellspring upgrade down to the south here and well it may actually come down to who has more moon juice in their moon wells bears slowly making their way back off to the north here the bear army of foggy will be able to take down buildings faster as we're looking at 45 supply compared to 60 going up against 78 over 100. all right the dryad army wants to engage against the other army instead they're just engaging against um well against the demon hunter school of town portal is available to the goblin tinker are we perhaps going to see some repairs here dryads are right here one of the staff of preservation save are we going to see more staff of, there's a manor burn siphon life trying to take down all of these here tree of life barely holding on and down to a hundred hit points but holding steady as one druid of the claw was well very very much in trouble that druid of the claw down to nine hit points ends up living to fight another day but for for some reason not using a rejuvenation until now all right repairing that tree of life and entangling a new gold mine dice is going to be running two bases compared to one here in a moment and foggy i don't believe has enough to really counter this massive army and this massive push by dice level five priestess of the moon a level five dark ranger ancient protectors uh, can root themselves and protect this tree of eternity which has nearly entangled this gold mine here in the center portion of the map meanwhile rushing on uh, down to the south here druids of the claw trying to get in position moon wells are they all maxed out yes we are so dice is going to be able to recharge pretty easily and quickly as long as there's not some catastrophic meltdown by dice he'll be able to take a game off of foggy druids of the claw getting ready to engage push across off to the north here dark ranger ready to dark ranger well are we gonna see any silence no going after the altar of elders not quite sure why they're attacking the altar of elders needs to go after those bears ancient of war is now making their way over ancient protectors also making their way over as well siphon life onto the demon hunter allowing that dark ranger to act as a little bit of a tank there's a manor burn onto the dark ranger more siphon life as well staff are preservation for the save as the priestess of the moon now well giving that massive damage bonus across the entire night elf dryad army more damage racking up the bears are well starting to tick away as we see uh, three ancient protectors 
well, marching into position and now starting to take down some of these bears. Another bear gets taken down there. I believe that was actually taken down by an ancient protector. No experience given, but at this point, losing the bear is probably damage enough. Ancient of War continuing to fight back through. Priest of the Moon getting closer to level 6 as the Demon Hunter trying to retreat back down to 300 hit points after drinking some Moonwell juice and ready to live and fight another day. All right, Dark Minions looking to rack up a little bit more damage. Ancient Protector still following things up here. 69 supply going up against 33. Foggy doesn't really seem to stand a chance not knowing how to try and defend against this onslaught of dryads and being reinforced by ancients of war and ancient protectors all right priestess of the moon gonna buy some scrolls of healing most likely and then rejoin in on the battle dryads gonna get in position here there's some rejuvenations under that druid of the claw before turning into the druid form and perhaps trying to fight his way through all right goblin tinker absorbing quite a bit of damage now trying to retreat back as well as the priestess of the moon still racking up quite a bit of damage demon priestess of the moon down to 60 or sorry down to 50 mana constantly getting mana burned here as the vampiric aura of that demon hunter allowing him to stay in that battle for a little while longer goblin tinker still continuing to try and fight but that is going to be too much there is the gg from foggy as Dice able to hold on to that two base advantage and take out his opponent. Um, well, how come it shows, but yeah, it should show Dice on the top since he had the higher score, winning in every single category, unit, hero, and a resource for the ultimate vic for the victory there. Dice um, having th what almost 4,000 more gold than his opponent, even though he lost 3,000 more gold to upkeep as well. That army size advantage allowed him to trade consistently more efficient than his opponent and come away with the victory. No starfall. We never got to level six. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it.